Ubuntu 3.14 React here, and today we're going to be looking at an old NVIDIA demo called Geoforms, released on June 21st, 2006 for the GeForce 7 series of graphics cards. This brings me back to when I got my 7900 GT back in the day, probably around about this sort of time. It's got this sort of nostalgia now, there's, you know, your 90s graphics nostalgia, your late 90s graphics nostalgia, and then there's this mid-2000s kind of graphics nostalgia, and I thought it'd be really cool to check out because you can just download it from the NVIDIA site, I'll put a link in the description, and it will just work on modern hardware and operating systems from what I've seen. So let's dive into the README here, a system requirements, it's a Windows XP or 2000, I think we're all right. So this is actually probably pre-Vista. Yeah, Vista was released on November 8th, 2006, 18 years ago. Wow. Pre-Vista, Windows XP 2000, it needs an NVIDIA GeForce 6000 or 7000 or later, Shader Model 3. It's meant for the 7000 series, but 6000 series will do it. Latest version of the drivers, which at the time were 84271, and I now think we're on like driver version 550 or something like that. Old school. Remember when the X drivers came out for NVIDIA? I think when it got to 100, they called it the X drivers or something. Ridiculous. And then they recommend installing Winamp here so you can play music through it. Geoforms is very, very shader heavy. Now at the time, they there was individual shaders here, your vertex shaders and your pixel shaders, and they were hardware versions of each shader. And I think there was only like 32 or 64 total shaders on the 1700 GT, something like that, split between vertex and pixel. So it wasn't uniform shaders, it wasn't CUDA cores, it wasn't tensor cores. I think it's streaming multiprocessors are now the main sort of cores that you have, and within that are the functionality of each individual thing, like RTX and CUDA and stuff like that. But back in the day, it was very much hardware split between uh, vertex and pixel shaders. And there's very little to work with. So when it says shader heavy, it's definitely not anymore, but uh, back then it was. SLI notes, there we go. 32-bit operating systems. SLI should automatically work in AFR mode, which is alternate frame rendering mode, and give you speed of about 70% increase. Don't use fraps or SLI indicator to test performance though, only debug view, find it via Google. Wow, this readme is very much non-corporate, it seems. It seems like it's written by dev, which is kind of nice. You have to manually correct an SLI profile. Oh wow, this is brilliant. Just do an internet search for the words cool bit SLI profile. This is so good. I love this readme. Yeah, just basically just this is just summarizing how you set up SLI with this. Audio input, it can listen to audio from other sources, analyze the sound stream for beats, and then drive the shapes you see on the screen to the music. You have to set the source. This is so jank. In order for it to get the audio, you need to yeah, have Winamp manually playing in the background, hook it in, configure the audio input. This is so good. I love it. And then you've got some runtime tips, which is what we'll be looking at during this, where you can use buttons to configure stuff in real time. You can make your own stencil images that will appear as shape cutouts in the blobs. There's a readme there for that as well. Uh, so you get an image editor such as Photoshop, create the cutout shape you want, uh, Gaussian blur, fade it, do another Gaussian blur, final contrast, and then save as a TGA file. So yeah, you can make your own stencils to change the look of the program, which is pretty cool. Again, a nice little, uh, little extra touch there. You can save the presets to a file by going to regedit and going to the key here. Here. Now I've tried looking for this key on Windows 11, I can't find it, so uh, I'm not sure where that config is stored. And we're going to be exploring all of these options here to change how it looks. So you can hit F1 for help, F3 to make sure it doesn't come out of screensaver mode, because technically it's a screensaver, so any button you press will take it out of the screensaver, so you have to press F3 to allow you to press other buttons. You can use the Alt key to temporary freeze frame, you can press the panic button to reset settings, L can lock the shading so that the blobs will keep moving around but they'll retain their current look and feel. Hitting L will turn the scroll lock keyboard light on and off to indicate the shading is locked. Tweaking presets, randomized shading, randomized geometry, randomized background, randomized noise volumes, algorithms. Every 60 seconds or so it will randomize, meaning that it will pick a random preset or just pick random shading movements. Toggle indirect lighting and subsurface scattering or refraction when transparent. Toggle procedural surface noise, toggle HDR and reflections. Yeah, this is 2006, so this is when HDR was in vogue very much, so we'll see how bright that makes it. And capital H, toggle between these keys, affecting just half the screen versus the entire screen. Always you can do a split and you can toggle motion blur as well as well as adjust the amount of motion blur here and decay time animation speed of the blobs and lens flare brightness with all these different settings so that's gone over the readme let's dive in now and run this bad boy and see what we can do on the opening of geoforms with a nice little nvidia logo there things spinning around nicely that's uh pretty awesome let's press f3 and that should in theory let us bring up help there we go, that's awesome. Let's see if we can get the FPS up in the corner. It's reading 60 FPS. GPU at 8% utilization and CPU at 9%. I think probably the only reason the GPU utilization is that high is probably because it's using older tech. So you could probably do this with even less utilization nowadays. But this looks amazing, actually, for 
2006. It's got such a 2006 feel to it, because obviously you've got the HDR on the bloom and stuff there. Uh, so if you've launched it manually, you'll be able to use the keyboard and mouse to control it. Let's have a look. So, middle mouse button, click down, moves the camera, which is really sensitive. Wow. Oh, we're at the start of Prometheus now. And this sort of moves the camera around on XY position. Ah, okay, when you click this, the middle mouse button, I think it moves the physical location of the camera. Um, and then right click is zoom. It's just very, very sensitive. Look at that. Look how nice that looks. It's definitely 2006 but it also has that kind of xbox look to it as well then there is a shortcut on i think some of the mods you can get the soft mods for the original xbox that have gl blobs which is very similar to this so yeah it's kind of that early 2000s era of tech but a bit more enhanced on the shaders of course with hdr and bloom but it's still quite abstract it's really really cool if we press alt okay alt is supposed to temporarily freeze frame it hold on nope Alt does not work. P will reset everything. Yep, there we go. L will lock the shading. Blobs will keep moving around, but they'll retain their current look and feel. Yes, they'll stay green like that. And they press L again, and then it will start changing again. Apparently, L turns the scroll lock on and off. Yep, it does. Yep. Capital S will randomize the shading. Ah, look at that. You can flick through a different shading by pressing S. Shift S. That's cool. So you can basically go through all the different effects. G will randomize the geometry. Oh, look at that. So once you get to a shader you like, like uh, all that, you can press L and it should lock it at that shader. And then you can randomize the background with Shift B. Oh, how cool does this look? So you can basically just keep pressing buttons until you get what you want out of it and then lock it and just watch it go. And then capital N, so Shift N, randomizes the noise volumes and algorithms. There you go, you can slightly see the difference there. Look at that, that's so cool. It's using like a HDR environment map, shaders to move these bubbles around. Imagine this is done through the vertex shaders and the pixel shaders, but primarily pixel shaders, because the blob is probably just quite simple geometry, unless it is all done through pixel shaders. F5, toggle indirect lighting and subsurface scattering. So this is another thing that was introduced in sort of the mid 2000s with subsurface scattering, where you can have light sort of being processed beneath the surface, like skin and stuff like that. So you can have a soft lighting under it. So that's pressing F5 has done the split screen. And I think the left is with subsurface scattering off and the right is with it on. And then six is procedural surface noise. Got a lot less noise on the surface on the left one and a lot more on the right one. And yeah, the capital H will toggle between these keys affecting just the half screen and the entire screen. And motion blur can toggle on and off as well. Once that's on, you can press shift H and it will toggle it from being only half the screen to the whole screen. Let's unlock the shaders. Oh, look at that. Do a reset of everything. So you can increase the motion blur using the plus and minus by the uh, numpad. And look at that. That is some serious motion blur. Oh, that is so, so DirectX 9 motion blur as well, where it's just really obvious. Oh, that's a classic, that is. It's like an old music video. Yeah, I'm not sure how motion blur worked back then, but it looks really obvious and really distorted rather than the smooth motion blur you get now. And the curly brackets will give you uh, animation speed of blobs. So you can slow them right down. Yeah, look at that. It's like a lava lamp. And you can speed them right up. So it becomes an absolute jumbled mess of motion blur. And of course you can turn that motion blur down and adjust the lens flare brightness with the sideways V keys or whatever they're called so you can reduce the amount of uh, whoa, whoa, or in this case increase the amount of JJ Abrams lens flare wow look at that god that's gone crazy there's no visual indicator to, <laughs> to uh, what you're doing so you can't it's really hard to tell I think that's brined up to the absolute max look at that so funky. You can randomize the shading a bit more, randomize the geometry. Oh my god, these blobs are moving really fast. Try and slow them down. There we go. Oh, that is bright. Look at that. That is 2006 HDR before they <laughs> figured out how to make it less insane. Oh, 
Wow, look at that, and that bloom there as well. I think that's when they lowered the thresholds on bloom on the HDR side of things to a really low level, so the slightest bit of lighting and the bloom would uh, flash right up on the screen. So let's toggle indirect lighting and subsurface scattering. Yeah, look at the difference that makes. So indirect lighting, so that is some sort of global illumination there. And some of those colors are bouncing off of the sky box there, I'm guessing, in the background, whatever that is in the background. And also colors from the blobs themselves. So yeah, you're still seeing a little bit of it here coming from that color, but a lot less than here. Just little, little touches, but there it's quite a lot. So I think you're getting actually a bit of light bounce, whereas here it's just the, that, I think that's just the fong. And then here you've actually got the proper indirect lighting, as well as the subsurface scattering. You see this looks like more like glass, whereas this looks much more like a softer sort of liquidy, almost organic material because of that subsurface scattering. Which is so cool that they let you do that with the split screen. And procedural surface noise. Oh, look at the difference there. Yep, that's like really smooth. And then, yeah, you've got the, the extra procedural noise there generated on the pixel shader side. Wow, so that's kind of another advantage going up to Shader Model 3 and DirectX 9. There is that, it's got much more DirectX 8 sort of look. I wonder if you can turn both these off at the same time, yep. And then HDR Reflections F7. So yeah, you can go right back to old school on this side. Look at that. So that side has no indirect lighting or subsurface scattering, or refraction, because it has subsurface scattering when these objects are opaque, but refraction when they're transparent. It has no procedural surface noise, and it has no HDR or reflections. I wish they'd have gone a bit deeper to just let you turn off HDR on its own, but maintain the reflections. But maybe it wasn't technically possible to do that. But that would have been interesting, because with reflections you could see what it looks like without HDR, but still having the reflections. Let's turn reflections back on. Oh wow, even with reflections on, because that surface isn't reflective, there's no reflection in it obviously, so it's just a plain colour. So you turn on the procedural noise and it actually gives it a bit more depth, and then you turn on the indirect lighting because it's an opaque object, so without the subsurface scatter and indirect lighting you've got nothing, it's just a grey blob. That just shows how much this scene is being built up when you turn those things off individually. God that looks so cool. Oh this looks amazing as well, let's turn some stuff off. Look at that. And you can even turn the indirect lighting and subsurface scattering or refractions on, but without reflections or HDR. Look at that. Turn it back on. And the, then the noise as well. That's so cool, the refraction effect. So this is a really cool screensaver. I just imagine back in the day as a screensaver, it was probably quite power consuming and also pretty made your graphics card quite a bit hot if you were to just leave this on a PC running for ages. Oh, look at that. That's a real old school look there. That's awesome. There's the HDR and reflections on. See, that one gives a good representation of not having HDR and reflections on. And you can also see the indirect lighting and subsurface scattering. But without the HDR on. And when you put the HDR on, you can see, yeah, it's mostly the indirect lighting and the actual, like, Fong reflections that get affected by the HDR, as well as the environment map. Being reflected in full HDR. It's just so colourful. I need to check out a few more of these as well. Like there's the Blobby Dancer one which is a, has that really cool music in it. It's just a shame I haven't figured out how to crank the resolution up so I'm gonna have a look into that bit now. So I've realised that under Nvidia demos on the start menu there is actually a Geoform settings. So here we are. So we've got display mode auto max. We can crank it all the way to 4k. Anti-aliasing samples 4 is already at that. Shading quality to the max. Motion blur full size. Streak length maxed out. Widescreen. There we go. Motion blur, lens flares, figure audio input. Unable to launch recording control. Yeah because it's for an older version of Windows, so I don't think that's going to work, unfortunately. CPU load, here we go. Auto calibrate to use 85% of the CPU. Well, we're using nowhere near that. So let's turn up the voxel cube size all the way up to 188. That is absolutely maxed out now. The stencils, I believe, allow you to make different shapes for the blobs when they move around, which would be cool to make my own one, but I don't have Photoshop or the experience to really do it, so I won't be doing that, unfortunately. But let's dive back in. Here we are on Geoforms with 4K maxed out settings. Now, I don't think it scales too well at higher resolutions because it seems like it was too far zoomed in there. So we've had to zoom out a little bit. But this is it. Yeah, top MSAA, maximum shader settings, 4K. Oh man, it looks really good. And this is 2006 tech and it still looks really good. And you'd have no hope of running this at 4K back in those days. Yeah, still running at, uh, oh no, here we go. Interestingly, it's running at about 50 FPS and it's using 21% of the GPU 
and 12% of the CPU back up to 60 FPS. So every now and then the FPS drops to 40. It must mean there's some sort of limitation in the graphical pipeline somewhere because yeah, the GPU usage is not going above 20%. I'd love to see a newer version of it done now with ray tracing, DLSS as well, stuff like that. We could see a Geoforms 2. Yeah, there's some really nice physically based rendering on top of that nowadays as well. It'd be great. Look at that. Ooh, god damn. Look at the shapes. So I think when you do a stencil shape with the TGA files, you can actually make it make custom shapes based on that file. So you could essentially, if you had Photoshop, get that to make the, yeah, these shapes using the TGA file, which is really cool. That's really, really cool. So I'm not sure if this is a whole team development thing or whether just one dude developed it and got put on as a demo, but it just feels like it's been written with some real love and care. So I love stuff like this. And again, it has that 2006 feel. Something about that that year as well. It's just really nice. Like I said, the Bloom, the HDR, the 7000 series. Oh man. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's so cool. That is amazing. Anyway, that was Geoforms, the 2006 demo on the NVIDIA site that you can download and run now. Introduced alongside the 7000 series of GPUs, so it's exactly that period of time. The GeForce 6000 and 7000 series graphics cards. If you're around in that time and PC gaming in that time, you'll know exactly the level of nostalgia that I mean. And it's so awesome to revisit stuff like this. And uh, if you're still at this point in the video, you're probably a long time dedicated fan of the channel. So I'll just give a quick little channel update. I'm making some changes to some certain things in my life right now. So there may be less uploads coming in the future, but I'll try and keep uploading weekly. It's just I'm going to be quite busy for a while. And also for the time being, I'm not going to be getting a RTX 5090, but hopefully later on in the year, I will be able to get a 5090. And and then I'll start doing videos on that, neural rendering, DLSS 4, and Half-Life 2 RTX, all that kind of cool stuff. So it'll be some probably smaller videos, quicker videos like this, more retro videos, and maybe even some weeks of uploads missed. But the channel isn't going anywhere, and I'm going to keep working on it and hopefully improve it. So thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like, subscribe if you're not already and you've made it this far. Hit the little bell, really helps. Leave a comment, let me know what you think of this and other nostalgia. I hope everyone's staying safe, and I will see you in the next video.